Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love what you see today, everything is for sale. Reach out to TMOSO at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. We also love to trade, and we love to buy. We are always looking to build inventory. Trade us your watch for a new flame, or sell us your collection. We will buy one watch. We will buy a hundred. No upper limit on value paid. We pay cash. We pay fast. We guide you through the process, and we make it seamless. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to me directly. Your one-stop shop, TMOSO at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a watch that represents the new face of Grand Seiko. Part of the new guard, this is the SLGH-017 from the EVO 9 series, the Night Birch. It is designed to evoke the bark of the white birch, albeit at night. And that Shirakaba birch that grows outside of Grand Seiko's watchmaking studios inspires the deeply roughed and textured dial, which is designed to look like birch bark. You can see the case as well as the dial furniture immaculately hand finished, micro fastening on these handcrafted pieces of dial furniture, logo, marquee, date frame, hands, as well as our indices. And you can see the case, the new Evo 9 profile with tin plate polished mirrored surfaces. This is all hand finished. The watch is super light in titanium. And while they call this high intensity titanium at Grand Seiko, I call it grade five because it's functionally grade five, meaning it's hypoallergenic, but it's also both lighter and more scratch resistant than standard steel. Here we have a screw down crown. We have abundant water resistance and we have a new 80 hour power reserve, a caliber 9S. This is the 9S A5, whereas previously the 36,000 vibration per hour high beat had a 55 hour power reserve. Now, courtesy of twin mainspring barrels, it is 80. And it has an all new architecture. As you can see, we have a separate bridge for the twin mainspring barrels. We have bridges for the winding system. And then we have a lovely symmetrical full balance bridge with a free sprung balance. It also uses Grand Seiko's first overcoil hairspring and a new dual impulse escapement that in some ways resembles the Omega coaxial, tangential contact, both direct and indirect impulse. All of this water resistant to 200 meters with a screw down crown. And as you can see on my wrist, this 40 millimeter titanium watch wears beautifully, super flat flush and incredibly comfortable. This is Japanese craft horology at its best. The dial, the movement, the case, all hand finished, hand assembled and checked manually before leaving the factory. This level of case finish, dial finish, and movement craft will not be found in Swiss watches at a comparable price. This is truly a handcrafted watch for the price of a machine-made Swiss watch. That said, Swiss watches have a lot to say in their defense, and a lot of times it's the smaller brands that make the most effective case against the alternatives and Grand Seiko poses a deft challenge to the likes of Rolex and Omega and Breitling, but Gerard Perregaux gives you vitreous flinque enamel. You can see here green enamel grand faux translucent on top of a guilloche base. This is what's known as flinque, an engraved base with a translucent enamel on top. This is the Laureato Eternity a 188 piece limited edition 42 millimeters in stainless steel 100 meters water resistant super slim at under 11 millimeters thick and you can see that it has a beautifully handcrafted enamel dial we'll throw it on my wrist and though it is a 42 it doesn't wear that large it feels the same to me as the 40 millimeter grand seiko you just saw part of the reason for that is that the lug profiles are arced down uh, also, the thin profile of this watch being so slim makes it compatible with smaller wrists, tight dress cuffs and sleeves. It just fits natural on a wrist, even as small as 14 centimeters circumference. My wrist, once again, being 16 centimeters. And Gerard Perigo has raised its game in the movement department. Grand Seiko, with its new 9S series, well, Gerard Perigo is slowly phasing in the better of its two automatic movement families. For years, we knew the 3000 series, but here with the 1800, although not a brand new movement, it is the newer of the two primary automatics at GP. It is bigger to better fill the case back. It is more elaborately finished with broader mirrored bevels. It has more power reserve at 54 hours. You could see triple finishing on the rotor. You could see black polish on the ratchet wheel and solarization on the barrels. You could see how beautifully symmetrical the barrel bridge itself is and that 
all of the other elements are handsomely and elaborately decorated to a high horology standard, especially those bevels which are truly broad and impressive. And again, a limited edition of 188. Gerard Perigot, along with its sister company, Ulysse Norden, last year bought back from the luxury group that owned them, now owned and run by the company's own management. They are officially independent once more, and this is a great example of how Swiss independent brands are often the best direct counters to the finest that Japan and Germany can offer. All right, though. Rolex deserves a chance to defend its crown, its five-pointed crown. And here we have the latest version of the platinum and stainless steel Rolex Yacht Master. So this is the post-2009 version. This is the 126622. Blue dial, red accents, big white gold indices, plenty of loom, no shortage, all three hands loom, thinner than a sub, more graceful in line than a sub, and yet still with the same movement. So the same shock resistance, anti-magnetism, power reserve, chronometry standards, and though this is a 100 meter water resistant watch, I've always taken the presence of a trip lock crown on this case to suggest that it's actually quite a bit more water resistant than Rolex is letting on. After all, most of the 100 meter watches at Rolex use a twin lock crown. Pop open the clasp. Inside, we have a five millimeter snap in, snap out, tool free adjustment mechanism known as Easy Link. Easy Link is crisp, quick to the draw, and convenient for periods of activity or inactivity when your wrist might swell or contract. The entire bezel is a solid block of platinum, and it is a yachtsman's bezel, so it can be turned in either direction. It is used for timing from zero up to 60 minutes. If you are a yachtsman, then the critical period is going to be the first five and second five minutes up to 10 total. And again, highly anti-magnetic and shock tolerant. Throw it on the wrist, it wears more gracefully than a Submariner, being thinner, but also more graceful of general shape. And the combination of the white metal platinum bezel with the steel case and bracelet gives it a lovely monotone look before you hit the white, blue, and red of the dial. A fantastic watch, and frankly, one I would rather wear than a Submariner. This is one of Rolex's best modern offerings, proving sometimes you don't need to change everything to remain competitive, as this watch is still very, very reminiscent of the original Rolex Yacht Masters from the 1990s, especially the late 90s, proving that evergreen design is generally the best design. That said, special editions have a lot to recommend them, and I have great emotional attachment to Montauk Highway as I am originally from Long Island, and while I was not a Hamptons socialite, I did love riding my bike the full length of the island from the urban parts of Nassau and Suffolk County all the way out to Montauk Point, where I would typically catch the Long Island Railroad back to wherever I started. This is the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Montauk Highway, a highway on which I have ridden thousands of miles on my bicycle. And this was launched as a special for London Jewelers back in 2009, which was a major New York area retailer of Audemars Piguet. 300 of these were made, 42 millimeters in stainless steel, with a lovely medley of a cream dial, chalk chocolate registers, and then this wonderful cyan blue that resembles the sky over Montauk on a nice day. Also, the sand-like color of the mega tapisserie dial reminding me of the dunes as you progress from the low-lying suburbs of Nassau County out to the low-lying dunes of Montauk. And as you can see, it is a non-loomed dial, so you do pay a little bit of a price for that lovely cyan blue, but it has a matching hornback alligator leather strap in brown and in blue. And on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it wears nicely, though imposing. I would say you probably can't wear this on a wrist smaller than 16 centimeters circumference. My wrist is 16, and I'm at the lower limit. Now, if you put it on one of AP's rubber diver straps, it is 100 meters water resistant, so you can take it swimming on the beaches off of Montauk, and it has their in-house base caliber, so it has a 55-hour automatic winding power reserve and the AP 3126 base with quick set and hacking seconds. It's got a Dubois de Praz vertical clutch chronograph module for smooth operation, and it is one of the most attractive and romantic of the Royal Oak Offshore Limited Editions. It's not dedicated to some sports star or Formula One driver or Hollywood glitterati. It's a place 
and a space that has wonderful associations for a lot of folks. Even if you just rode the LIRR out to Montauk and watched Montauk Highway pass looking out the train, it probably has some sort of emotional resonance for you if you're from New York, and this watch will always have that for me. Now, Grand Seiko has a lot to recommend it recently, as it has become more ambitious in both design and engineering. Launched in 2021 and made in only 140 pieces, this is the 40 millimeter Platinum Grand Seiko High Beat SLGH007. And what may look at first like it has a night birch style dial, take a quick look at them side by side. This is the 017, this is the 007. This is designed to resemble the inside of a tree. This is the this is the birch bark at night, but these are the rings inside the tree indicating the passage of age. And for the 140th anniversary of the Seiko family of companies, it was thought that this interior tree ring treatment was a poetic tribute to that near century and a half of history. Now the case itself is platinum, a rarity for Grand Seiko, and yes, they use the same Zeratsu hand polish on this case that they use on the titanium and the steel, resulting in outstanding finish. And this watch too, though perhaps more of a dress watch than the other one, does have a great deal of water resistance down to 100 meters. Now it is also a high beat, it does have the new 9SA5, so two barrels, a handsome architecture, which you can probably see better here because this one doesn't have a case back sticker on it. But you could see the architecture of that barrel bridge making these solarized barrels visible. You could see that the bevels are to a high grade. The screws are blued and it is a high beat. So 36,000 vibrations per hour like a Zenith El Primero. That's why the hand seems to sweep so swiftly. The watch also includes a matching folding clasp. And you can see that it too is made of platinum. This is a weighty watch, and you will be impressed. When you hold it in your hand, it feels as expensive as it is with a super premium aesthetic matched by the eyes closed tangible qualities of a platinum case. A really cool watch, handmade inside and out with a subtle dial aesthetic that's lost on casual observers. This is the opposite of a Rolex. Only watch nerds are gonna recognize and appreciate this, and under most circumstances, only you will know how special it is. Lovely, this is the Grand Seiko 140th anniversary. This is the SLGH007, a spectacular limited series and one of Grand Seiko's best. Speaking of anniversaries, that was 140 years of the Seiko families. How about 50 years of Gerald Genta? Well, back in 2019, Bulgari gave us the first sign that it was considering a revival of its two tenant brands. Back in 2010, they started folding Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth into the Bulgari brand itself, co-branding the watches for two years, and then Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth went away entirely. Well, 2019 was the 50th anniversary of the creation of the original Gerald Genta brand in the Valet du Jeu, and for the occasion, Bulgari launched this, the Gerald Genta Arena by Retro 50th Anniversary Edition in Platinum, 41 millimeters. It's physically massive with a blue sunburst dial and the double retrograde with jump hour for which the Genta brand was famous in the 2000s. The company launched its first retrograde jump hour back in 1996 and it became a signature of the company largely after Gerald Genta himself had already moved on to new challenges. So this watch is a celebration of Genta the company as much as Genta the man. Now it's incredibly entertaining to play with this. We already know that Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth are coming back as brands in their own right under Bulgari and Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, which owns them all. So it's exciting to see this resurrection in play so early back in 2019. This is now a brand that's going to be rolled out in very small quantities with very expensive and exclusive watches. And the watch you see here cost over $59,000 when it was new in 2019, meaning it was an extremely exclusive and niche piece for folks who are really, really into the history of watchmaking. It does have a quick set system for the retrograding date. It does have a stop second system, even though it does not have seconds. And you can see that the 
hour, the jump hour is blue printed on a white base. We have polished indices and hands and numerals on the dial side. There's an hour jumper that allows you to jump the hour without moving the minute. And whereas the original versions of this watch would have used either ETA movements on the low end or Girard Perigo movements on the higher end. Here we have a Bulgari BVL 300 automatic winder that's properly large for a modern automatic watch with a 42 hour power reserve and rugged with a full balance bridge. Surprisingly, the watch is 100 meters water resistance so on a different strap, you could swim with it. It is an extravagant thing, but not too big as 41 millimeters means it's full size, not oversized. It has a matching Gerald Genta branded white gold double folding clasp. And on my wrist, it's simply outstanding. I'm not sure if the Montauk Highway or this watch is my favorite show, or my favorite watch, I should say, on today's show. It is a show within a show, I suppose you could say. Uh, but one of them, the Montauk Highway or this, both watches that I adored years before I got into the watch industry. I was so disappointed when I was back in the Navy in 2010 and 2011 that the Gerald Genta Arena by Retroline was going away. Well, now it's reborn. And one of my favorite watches of recent years is now on my wrist right here. By the way, I saw the original version of this in 2019. And when Bulgari was showing me the prototype, it was really weird. It was a plexiglass crystal on a steel case. Trust me, sapphire and platinum right here, the production model, is much, much nicer. And again, something I dreamed about in the years when I was outside the watch industry looking in. I'm glad to see it back. And this is where the comeback started. All right, let's say you want a blue dialed watch that's even a little bit more sporting than that. Well, for 2023, H. Moser and C. of Schaffhausen launches a newer, smaller version of its Pioneer sports watch. When the Pioneer first came out in 2015, it was only available in precious metal and only available in a 42.8 millimeter size. Now we have 40 millimeters in stainless steel and it's only 12 millimeters thick, 120 meters water resistant, automatic winding with a three day power reserve and a manufacturer movement and fully loomed. This is the Pioneer Center Second 40 millimeter from the Pioneer 40 millimeter collection. It uses a fumé smoked dial, light at the center, dark at the edge. This is the Arctic blue color, which is lighter and more electric than the standard funky blue you find at Moser. Moser is very discreet about branding. You know what this is. You know from the look that it's a Moser. But if you look very carefully, you can see in clear lacquer, they have signed the watch in the most subtle manner possible. On the reverse, HMC 200, pole-based magic lever bi-directional winding system, full balance bridge, free sprung balance, Moser making not just the big parts, but the tough parts of the movement. Through its precision engineering subsidiary, Moser makes the balance, the hairspring, and both the wheel and the anchor of the escapement. So very, very impressive. We have ceramic rotor bearings, bi-directional, pole-based, magic lever style winding system. It does have hacking seconds. My favorite detail of the finish is the double crested Cote de Genève design, which I really adore. Full rubber strap, supple, perforated for ventilation, brand new Moser factory strap. We'll take a quick look at the watch on the wrist. By the way, how much do you love the recessed coined flanks of the case? Super wearable and an option I would even encourage a women to consider. As the timepiece sits easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, I think down to 13 and a half centimeter circumference, you're gonna find this wears really, really well. Now, I always like to finish with a flourish, and I actually debated which watch would be the last watch today. So we're going to start with one that I consider co-equally the coolest watch on the show. Back in 2013, Debatoon decided to create zirconium cases with black oxidation. So this is not PVD. This is not some sort of DLC application. When zirconium oxidizes, it blackens, and you're looking at that black oxide here. And as you can see, the oxide can be deposited on polished surfaces. So this case is 43 millimeters in diameter. It's only 11.7 millimeters thick. It has variable geometry, spring-loaded, floating lugs, manual wind, two barrels, self-adjusting. You cannot accidentally overwind it. We have a 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate and a tourbillon that makes one circuit every 30 seconds, so twice the speed. Five-day power reserve. Take a good look at the tourbillon. You can see there's a mirror below it to better reflect the light. You can see that the tourbillon escape wheel is silicon, that the balance wheel itself is silicon, that the cage itself is fired blue titanium, and that the rim of the wheel is white gold. And yet this tourbillon assembly weighs only 18 
hundredths of a gram, 0.18 gram, the lightest tourbillon in the world, and these are accurate to about one third of a second per day. On the reverse side, power reserve indicator, as well as gorgeous finish in several different varieties. You can see that the indicator is fully rounded and black polished, the mechanism satinated, engine turned perlage all over the base plate, mirrored anglage on the bridge, is even polished within the jewel sink, and all screw heads black polished on their heads. This is as good as it gets. You can see even the buckle is designed to match the design of the lugs. Also, these were made in 2013 and only six were created. So you see this one here? There are only five others in the world. And the finishing is very traditional, although avant-garde. You could see that there's a cap atop the deltoid barrel bridge that has been entirely black polished and then blackened. You could see on the edge mirrored anglage all screw heads black polished. We have blackened globes that act as the hour indices. Polished, hand finished, modified breguet hands. And then Cote de Batun on the plate below solarized barrels. As good as it gets and easy to wear. The watch is super light in zirconium and sapphire. Feather light on my wrist. You can see just how low it is. Although it's not necessarily the kind of watch you want to disappear underneath the cuff. Nevertheless, the ergonomics are superb and it is flat enough to fit underneath any sleeve. Chopard, long a renowned jeweler, became a manufacturer in 1996, and 20 years later, it launched this. Made in 20 pieces in rose gold, this is the Chopard, Louis Elise Chopard Perpetual Chrono. So, this watch is huge at 45 millimeters in diameter, but there's a lot inside. The dial is made of solid gold cut on a, a lathe to create this sunburst or sunray guilloche. And you can see it emanates from the date, not from the center underneath the hands. So we have a lathe cut solid gold silver dial, rose gold chapter rings for the AM, PM, and the day, as well as the leap year phase and the month. We have a moon phase. It doesn't just change phase, it orbits around the seconds dial. And then we have a flyback chronograph, Reset, restart, rapid succession, great for timing things that happen in rapid succession because you don't have to first stop, reset, and restart. With the flyback, reset, restart, just like that. The watch does include a hacking function, a perpetual calendar that does not need to be reset until the year 2100. The moon phase has an adjustment interval of 122 years. Turn the lights off, a surprising amount of loom on those modified alpha style hands they call them delta as you can see on the reverse side caliber 310 is spectacular take a look at this this is a cosc certified swiss chronometer it is also geneva hallmark stamped of both movement and of case it is also constructed of fair mind rose gold so it is triple certification geneva hallmark fair mind gold chronometer here, you can see a black polished column wheel for the column wheel operated chronograph. It also has a vertical clutch, so when you engage the chronograph, you can see the seconds hand doesn't jump. It starts seamlessly without any leap or stagger. And if you wish, you can leave it running full time. With the vertical clutch, there's no additional wear and tear. We'll flip it over one more time. Take a look. The bridges and plates are made of German silver. Since we are in Geneva for the assembly of this watch, we will describe this as Maishore, which is the French version of German silver. Same stuff, different name. It's made of nickel, copper, and zinc, with the copper giving it its golden hue. And you can see beautifully decorated here. We have interior angles, we have exterior points where two bevels meet. Note that the beveling on the steel chronograph components, difficult to achieve on steel. It's the same standard as on the Maishore bridges and plates. All screw heads black polished with slots and circumference chamfered. You can see we have here a free sprung balance with a full balance bridge for shock resistance and all of this manual wind with a 60 hour power reserve. And you can see 16 of 20, a very rare watch indeed. A rare watch, beautifully equipped with a matching and very substantial rose gold deployment clasp so you don't accidentally drop your hugely expensive and frankly huge multi-complication. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters once more. And you can see it's too big for me, but this isn't a watch for me. This might be a watch for you. And if you've got a wrist of 17 centimeters circumference or larger, it could be on your wrist as soon as tomorrow. Reach out. If you wish to 
Inquire about the price of this or any watch to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.